Hi, we're looking at this ratio and wondering if it can ever be an integer. This is easier if we break the numerator and denominator down into prime factors. But how does something like 3 to the x minus 2 to the x factorize anyway? We found that on every even x, this expression is, is divisible by 5. And on every third x, there's a factor of 19. On every fourth x, there's a factor of 13, etc. So to look deeper, let's do some more clock math. So when we write 2 to the x mod p, that means the remainder of 2 to the x when divided by p. Okay, so mod stands for modulo. Uh, so this is really a modular arithmetic or clock math. For example, 2 to the 4th is 1 mod 5 because 16 divided by 5 leaves a remainder of 1. I'm supposed to write three lines here instead of two for congruence, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, this distinction is super important in certain contexts, which this is not one of those. So here's a chart of 2 to the x mod p for all x. Uh, so let's look at when p is uh, the 5. So it goes 2, 2 to the x goes 2, 4, 8, 16. And so these numbers mod 5 go like this, 2, 4, 3, and 16 mod 5 is 1. And then starting with x equals 5, the sequence repeats. 2, 4, 3, 1. And if the remainders here are on a 5-hour clock, that means 2 to the x hits all of the hours on the clock out of order, except for 0. Because 2 to the x is never perfectly divisible by 5. So mod math is kind of like asteroids. You don't have an infinite computer screen. What goes off the right side of the screen reappears on the left side. Otherwise, it's pretty similar to regular math. So a plus b mod p is the same as a mod p plus b mod p. Uh, a times b mod p, well, you don't have to multiply a and b. You can just do a mod b times b mod p. Uh, and that means a squared mod p is the same as a mod p squared. For us, uh, also, we're really interested in when 3 to the x minus 2 to the x is divisible by 5, which we can rewrite with regular math as... 3 to the x equals 2 to the x mod 5, um, and that means they have the same remainder when divided by 5. That means after x time steps, the crazy clock on this planet shows the same time as the crazy clock on this planet. And you can see that happens here when x is 2, 4, 6, etc., which explains why the numerator is divisible by 5 when x is even. When's it divisible by 7? Looks like 2 to the x has a cycle of length 3, goes 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1. While 3 to the x has a cycle of length 6. And so they agree only on every 6th x, and that's why there's a 7 here. How about 11? Looks like they agree on every 10th x, and we can see the same with 13, 17, 19. Okay, so this is a cool table, and there's a bunch of patterns here. First, whenever there's a 1, you know the sequence is about to repeat. Like 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1. Second, there's always a pair of 1s right when x equals p minus 1. Uh, so like here, uh, the prime p is 5, and here's x is 4. And that's called Fermat's little theorem. Not Fermat's last theorem, his little theorem. And I was really amazed when I learned about that. So uh, if 2 to the x now makes it all the way to p minus 1 without cycling, then 2 is called a primitive root of p. Here, 3 to the x starts cycling before we reach x equals 12, so it's not a primitive root. Now, when it does make it all the way, you get a super random looking sequence of numbers between 1 and p minus 1. I mean, it starts with 2 or 3 and it ends with 1, but in the middle it's crazy. So let's look at a bigger prime here, p equals 89. So we get, as x increases, we get 3, 9, 27, 81. So far, so good. But then it starts getting weird. So here's a plot with x across the top and 3 to the x mod 89 down the left. People actually use this um, <laughs> 3 to the x mod p as a random, pseudo-random number generator, honest to God. Uh, that's how weird this looks. So let's look here at 3 to the 70th mod 89. It's 5. So how do you even compute that? Isn't 3 to the 7th, 70th too huge to write out? 
and then see if it's divisible by 5. Well, there's a trick. So we break 70 down into powers of 2 here, 64 plus 4 plus 2, and rearrange like this. And then it turns out it's easier to do this with powers of 2, because separately we're going to build a table of 3 to the powers of 2 mod 89. And it turns out that 3 to the 64th mod 89 is super easy to compute. So first, 3 is 3 mod 89. 3 squared is 9 mod 89. 3 to the 4th is 81. And we don't have to compute 3 to the 8th, because we already know it's 81 squared mod 89. So it's easy just to square 81. Uh, that's 64 mod 89. And the same thing here. We don't have to compute 3 to the 16th. We just find out that it's 2 mod 89, and so on until 3 to the 64th mod 89 is just 4 squared or 16. Because of the power of doubling, we could actually do 3 to the millionth in just 20 steps. So coming back here, this product is 16 times 81 times 9, and it's easy to calculate that has a remainder of 5. So we can build this whole chart that way. It looks like stars in the night sky. So it's super easy to compute something like 3 to the 70th mod 89, it's just 5. Turns out the inverse is super hard, figuring out that 3 to the what is 5 mod 89. That's called the discrete, discrete log problem, and it's a cornerstone of internet encryption. Okay, so this expression is divisible by p whenever these numbers agree, which is here and here and here. This is why 19 shows up so often as a factor of this expression. So clock math is crazy, and see you next time.